Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. So Apple has announced some new processors. These are processors that are designed in-house and they're based on the ARM instruction set architecture and it uses them in its Mac computers and they are the next processors in its M series. And in this video, I wanna tell you all about them. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so Apple has had its scary fast event and it's announced some new MacBooks and some new iMacs. And inside those devices, we get three new processors, the M3, the M3 Pro, and the M3 Max. Now, the first thing I really wanna point out is this is quite a step by Apple. They've released the M3, the M3 Pro, and the M3 Max all on the same day. Now, this is one of the major things that Apple has done that has really changed their game. There's another one we'll talk about in a minute. And actually, I thought Apple were kind of slipping a little and sliding back down. But actually, the two things that they've done in this announcement really are significant. Now, look at this. Look, the and vanilla uh, M1 was first announced in November 2020. Fantastic. The move to the ARM architecture for the MacBooks. And really, it was the beginning of this whole uh, revolution. Then they came out with the uh, Pro uh, about a year later and the Max at the same time. And then a few months later, half a year after that, you get the Ultra. So from 2020 all the way through to 2022, we've got the M1 line being developed by Apple. And that really did stretch out that line for, you know, one and a half years. And they got all of the good variations out of that. Then we get the M2 comes out just a few months after the M1 Ultra. OK, and we're back into the same thing again. So June, always with another six months go past, you get the Pro and the Max come out and then another six months and you get the Ultra coming out in June 2023. So you would have expected that now you kind of get the M3 in October 2023 and then sometime in June or July of October 2024, we're going to get the Pro or the Max. No, we've got the vanilla M3, the Pro and the Max all now together on the same day available in devices in the next few days so this is quite a step change if they can now keep this up for the m4 the m5 and for years going forward this will be amazing now we still haven't got an ultra we don't know whether there'll be an ultra but if there is it's obviously going to be a few months behind maybe we'll see it uh, as i say march could be april may of next year but the interesting thing is is that ultimately i'm assuming that apple want to release the m4 Maybe with all of them in one go, or maybe they'll achieve that by the M5. But the point is, by having all three available today, that is a major change in the way Apple plan, design, and then actually manufacture and release their processors. So quite amazing. And that's even before we get to see what's in them. So here is the die shots, the M3, the M3 Pro, the M3 Max. Basically, the idea, of course, is that you're scaling up in terms of the number of CPU cores and the GPU cores and therefore the amount of caching and the internet interconnects as well. But you can basically see that the same kind of uh, things are found in all the same areas. You know, these are obviously all the same kind of things, but it's been scaled up. So you get more cores as you go. It's the same chip, but scaled up more, more, more. As I say, more cores, more GPU cores, more interconnects, more caching. Uh, and that looks, and that's what we've had with the previous ones. So this is the first processor for personal computers, in this case, laptops and desktops, that comes with the three nanometer process from TSMC. Of course, we've seen this previously with the three nanometer from TSMC for the iPhone. Now, an interesting fact that they said during the process, you can fit two million transistors using TSMC's three nanometer process on the cross section of a human hair. Two million, two million transistors in the cross section of a human hair. That's how little these things are getting down to. So let's just look at the transistor. The M3 features 25 billion transistors, which is five billion more than the M2. And of course the Pro and the Max are even more. So what have we got here? Let's look at the vanilla. We've gone from 16 billion in the first M1 to 20 billion, then to 25 billion. In the Pro, we've gone from 33.7 up to 40 and then down to 37. That's quite an interesting one. That's to do with the different core configurations that they were available under the Pro line there. And then the Max 57, 67, 92, a massive leap here in the Max. But going from the original 16 billion M1 up to a 92 billion 
uh, uh, M3. And then, of course, we've been over the 100 uh, billions here uh, in the Ultra. Now, if you do get an Ultra in here, and really, if you look at these, these are basically double because they stick two of them together. So this could be somewhere up in the 180 billion transistor range, which is just mind blowing. But that's not what was announced today. What was announced was these three here, 25 billion, 37 billion, and 92 billion transistors. Just think about the technology you need to be able to build that. Okay, now looking at the different configurations, if you remember the vanilla one has basically always kind of kept to a, basically an octal core, four plus four CPU cores. And then back in the day for the M1, it was seven or eight GPU cores. And the difference is because you could buy cheaper models, basically, if you weren't gonna be doing so much gaming or whatever you need the GPU cores for, you get a slightly cheaper one, which might be okay, but you still get the four plus four cores. Uh, the same down to the M2, eight or 10 GPU cores, still eight core CPU. And it's the same story here with the M3, eight or 10 GPU cores available, four plus four for the CPU. When it comes to the Pro, it's always been a few more performance cores, six or eight, and then two, six or eight, and then four, as we got to the M2, and now it's five or six and six. So really this should be a 12 core setup, six plus six is what they're looking at. Uh, and then for GPU, the same 14 or 16, 16 or 19, now it's 14 or 18. Again, just so you could buy different models that might be slightly cheaper to fit your budget. And then for the max, 8 plus 2, 8 plus 4, now it's 10 or 12 plus 4. And 24, 32 GPUs, 30, 38, now it's 30, 40 GPU cores, again, for the same budgetary reasons. So if there's going to be an ultra version, I suppose you can expect there to be 32 cores, uh, an 80 core GPU, something like that. Maybe a 60, 80 core GPU, something like that. Now, what does that mean in terms of performance? Well, these are Apple's uh, numbers. Again, no uh, kind of uh, axes on these graphs, Just it's just faster. And until we get some actual machines in our hands, we can see what the actual numbers are. But for the efficiency cores, 30% faster in the M3 compared to the M2 and 50% faster compared to the M3. Now remember that's important because if you've got four of these efficiency cores, four plus four, then 50% faster for the efficiency cores from the M1 to the M3 is a significant improvement. And then for the performance cores, 15% faster than the M2, 30% faster than the M1. And again, a four plus four set up across all of those there. So in every way you slice it, you're definitely getting a double digit improvements in performance here when you upgrade to the M3 uh, family of processors. Now, interestingly enough here, we've just had the Qualcomm event and the Qualcomm chose to use the i7-1360p in one of its graphs. Here we've got the same thing from, uh, from Apple. And there again, they're showing relative performance. We don't know what this is. Uh, we do know that this is a, 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 an MSI Prestige laptop with the the i7-3060p in it. But basically they're saying that this laptop here, this 12 core one, give you 40, what, 44 uh, watt setup, and you can get the same performance with a quarter of the power. This is like a, what, 10, 12, 13 watt setup here for the M3, and even greater performance and still staying under 20 watts. That's what Apple are claiming, uh, and we'll see what it is when we get the uh, real uh, real benchmarks in, but historically Apple have been fairly accurate, not always completely accurate, but fairly accurate with these presentations. Now, one thing that is interesting is, is this based on the A16 Bionic or the A17 Pro? Why do we say that? Well, the M2 was based on the A15. So following that, we, would, we were thinking that the M3 would be based on the A16 and that the A17 would come later on. However, there is good reason to believe that this is actually based on the A17 Pro. And if it is, this is the second thing that Apple have done that is a major thing. They've they've brought up, they've brought themselves in line with their iPhone Pros. Before, the M range were always a generation behind. So when the new M processor came out, there was already an A processor that was already better than it. And now Apple have been able to bring them into line. So now when we see an A18, we know that there's going to be an M processor not too long behind it that will use the same thing. Now, why do we think it's the A17 Pro? Well, first of all, it's three nanometer. And of course, the A17 Pro is a better fit for the move to three nanometer because it's already on three nanometer. Rather than Apple having to take the A16 and then shrink it down 
uh, into three nanometers from my, I think it was four nanometers, wasn't it? So although that's possible, or that's absolutely doable, that would have been an extra step. It would have made sense to just go and grab the A17, which it looks like they did. Also, this is really important. When the A17 was announced, two of the things were noted here for the high performance cores, improved branch prediction and wider decode execution engines. Now, the A16 was really just an A15 Plus. It was just an enhanced version of the A15. I did say that at the time when the when I did my review of the of the A16, a lot of people didn't like the fact that I said that, but in time it's proved that's actually what it was. Now here though, with A17, we've got improved branch prediction and wider decode. Now that basically means you have to redesign the architecture. The internal architecture, which is called the micro architecture, needs to be redesigned to cope with that. It's not just a bolt on, it's not just a tweak in frequency, it's not just adding more cash. This is a change in how the whole internals work. And look here, for the M3, we've got improved branch prediction and wider decode and execute engines. Exactly the same wording that we have with the A17 Pro, which was lead us to believe that this is actually based on the same CPU design as the A17 Pro. So that would mean now the A3 family is based on the A17 Pro, so they're now in sync. Apple are able to bring out the M3, the M3 Pro, and the M3 Max all on the same day. So everything's syncing up, and that really does give them a great advantage for all the future generations going forward because everybody's in step. The, the architectures are in step, all the different models are coming out in step. This is a great way for Apple just to keep releasing these processors in a steady cadence and actually hitting the target each time. Now we mustn't forget the GPU of course, so lots of interesting things have been adding to the GPU. You've got dynamic caching, which is a transparent mechanism in hardware that Apple have implemented in its GPUs that handle the way the memory is allocated. So it better uses the memory, which therefore improves bandwidth and overall performance. And that's transparent to the de developer. So it's not something the developer has to say, switch on dynamic caching or give me this amount of memory using this dynamic. No, it does it automatically. You've got mesh shading, something of course we've seen uh, in the PC world, in DirectX, we see it from NVIDIA. So traditionally with GPUs, you're shading what they call vertex shading. Uh, and that's lots and lots of triangles and millions and millions of triangles that are used. Now, basically, that ha that was a bottleneck. Now, using mesh shading, you can use all the different threading architectures that GPUs have. So you can actually dish out this part of the shading pipeline in a, in a more parallel fashion that just basically improves performance and that's something we've seen in the in the in other in the pc world and that's now come over here onto the mac and the ray tracing the ray tracing that we saw uh, in the iphones is now also here on the mac so the first mac now with hardware accelerated ray tracing and that's logical because if they're taking the stuff from the iphone then they're going to bring it across uh, over onto the mac you've got hardware accelerated uh, h264 h 265 ProRes and ProRes uh, RAW. I'm assuming that's all encode and decode. And then AV1 decode. So there you go, AV1 decode now. Now, of course, a lot of these features like ray tracing and AV1 were already in the iPhone, as it makes sense for them to come over to the Mac. And so what does that mean in terms of GPU? Again, a uh, pretty uh, simple graph, but Apple are saying up to 1.8 times faster rendering. Now, I don't know whether they're saying, well, that's a ray tracing scene, for example, and of course it's faster. 2.5 times faster. Well, let's just give Apple the benefit of the doubt and just say that these new GPU with dynamic caching with the uh, mesh shading certainly makes a big increase in the terms of the GPU performance. Okay, so let's talk about the RAM. Now, this is all unified RAM, which means it's built onto the same chip as the uh, processor and the GPU, not part of the same die, but built onto the same chip, which some people don't like because it means you can't upgrade just by buying some new DIMMs and sl slotting them in. A lot of people do not like this, but that's the way Apple are designing it. And so if you buy an M3 base machine, you can have up to 24 gigabytes. If you have an M3 Pro, that will support up to 36 gigabytes. And if you buy an M3 Max, that will support up to 128 gigabytes. But when you make your decision to buy your laptop or your iMac, make sure you get the amount of RAM you think you might need even in a couple of years time because assuming you're going to keep this device for you know five to seven years, that's how long my last uh, Mac lasted me, uh, then you're, you're going to want to make sure your, your RAM memory, is, you know, is, you've got enough. So always buy more. This is my personal tip to always buy more than you think you need today because you're going to need it in the future. So maybe save up a bit more money before you buy it and then buy one with more, with more RAM in it.
And then of course we mustn't forget the neural engine, again 60% faster than what we had in the uh, M1, 15% faster than what we had uh, in the M2. And here's the overall summary of what you've got, 25, 37, 92 billion transistors, dynamic caching for the GPU, they improved GPU, they're pointing out this, this dynamic caching also means that this really is a new architecture for the GPU. It's interesting, does this new architecture now lead its way into the A18 or was this actually all the time what we had in the A17 but Apple didn't mention it, it's interesting. Uh, AV1 decode, hardware accelerated ray tracing, all the different uh, combinations of memory, CPU, GPU there depending on which one you get. Faster neural engine, faster uh, GPU. Uh, mesh shading then of course built on three nanometers. So there you go, the M3, the M3 Pro and the M3 Max. Okay, so there we have it, the new M3 family of processors from Apple. And obviously they will be out relatively soon. Once we get some benchmarking information, I will make a video updating you on that. And I'll probably also make a video comparing it to the recently announced Snapdragon X Elite, which is also an ARM-based processor designed custom, but this time by Qualcomm. Let's compare the two to see how they're doing. Okay, so if you want to catch those videos, I really do recommend that you subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.